Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to provide you with an update as to what's happening between the USA and Iran as a direct result of what's happening currently in Israel. As I reported in a recent video, the USA recently undertook airstrikes in Syria, targeting bases that they believed were backed by Iran that were attacking US forces in the region. And it's now been announced that the USA has launched further airstrikes as a result of more than 40 attacks that have taken place against US bases in the Middle East in retaliation to the US's ongoing support of Israel. Now, Iran have not come out and officially stated that they're targeting the US air bases. However, the US have pointed the finger directly at Iran because they're longtime supporters of both Hamas in Israel and also Hezbollah in Lebanon. And concerns are now rising that Hezbollah could be drawn into the war with Israel and also that Hezbollah might also target US forces in the region. So in today's video, I'll provide you with more details of the attacks that have been undertaken against US air bases. We'll then talk about the latest airstrikes that have been organized by the USA. We'll talk about Iran's involvement and what their link is to the Israeli war. I'll then provide you with some more background on Hezbollah and why they're being drawn into this conflict. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary as to what I think the risks are of this escalating into a much wider conflict. So before we get started on all of that, once again, I'd like to say thank you so much to everybody that's bought me a coffee or sent me a YouTube super thanks. Really, really appreciate that. And if you'd like to support the channel, please have a look below where you'll find links to my Patreon account, as well as buymeacoffee.com and YouTube super thanks and membership scheme. Recent attacks by Iranian-backed militias have injured at least 45 Americans on bases in Iraq and Syria. Their pace increasing with 10 attacks just since Thursday, bringing the total number to at least 38 attacks since October. Fortunately, the majority of these attacks have been unsuccessful in that they have not caused injuries, damage to infrastructure, or deaths of any Americans. But there have been at least 45 U.S. service members who've suffered minor injuries. Now, the reason that that number jumped so much much since about this time last week is because of the number of service members who've come forward with potential traumatic brain injury. That is something, it's, it's a, an ailment that has a very wide range of symptoms from pretty mild to extremely severe. And it's something that, the, that uh, doctors will have to monitor these people for months, if not longer, to see if, whether they actually have traumatic brain injury or TBI. But that's why the number is now up to 45. But what we also learned yesterday, Savannah, is that there have now been four attacks, not just the two we were aware of, but four that have led to U.S. injuries. Now, these 38 minimum now of 38 attacks, because the reality is we hear about more every every few hours, uh, they have been carried out for the most part by one-way attack drones. There have been some mortars, some indirect fire. But for the most part, most of those munitions, whether it's a drone or a rocket or a mortar, most of them have not reached the bases or they've been shot down by the base defense systems. The United States military launched a series of airstrikes Wednesday on a weapons storage facility used by Iranian-backed militant groups in eastern Syria. The Secretary of Defense revealing that the U.S. military is responding to more than 40 attacks on U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria. These attacks have left dozens of our soldiers and troops with traumatic brain injuries. At the direction of President Biden, two F-15 fighter jets launched airstrikes in eastern Syria at a weapons facility that is used by Iran's Revolutionary Guard and proxy forces that are backed by Iran. They were in response to attacks by those groups on U.S. troops in both Syria and Iraq, over 40 in the last three weeks alone, that have injured nearly 50 American service members. There was yet another attack just today on a U.S. base in Syria. And in another sign of increased tensions in the region, an American Reaper drone costing about $30 million was shot down in the Red Sea by the Iranian-backed Houthi rebels. They had fired missiles last month toward Israel, which were shot down by a U.S. naval ship. The goal with these sorts of airstrikes is to cut off the flow of supplies so that these groups can't carry out more attacks against bases with Americans on them. In the past, uh, back in March, actually, of this year, the U.S. carried out a series of strikes when there were attacks like these, and it was successful. We went for months, fr frankly, from March until October 17th, with really no attacks against bases with Americans there. U.S. officials believe these attacks are linked to Iran. What does that tell us about how or why these attacks are being carried out? 
Yeah, that's right. So those facilities that they hit a week and a half or so ago now, officials were telling us at the time that they had direct links to the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps. That's the group who is believed to be supplying, equipping, training and funding in many cases some of these militia groups in Iraq and Syria that are carrying out these attacks. And in fact, the U.S., while they're not saying that they that they have any intelligence or evidence that Iran sort of greenlit this uptick in attacks, they are calling on the Iranian regime, Iranian leaders, to tell these militia groups to stop, which, which of, course, of course indicates that the U.S. believe that, that Iran has some sort of sway uh, or power over these groups to make them start or stop these sorts of attacks. Officials, though, continue to say that there is no direct link between this uptick in attacks, now 38 of them in the last several weeks, they're saying there's no uptick in this, these attacks and direct link to Israel and Gaza. But the reality, guys, is this is not happening in a vacuum. We had not seen these sorts of attacks on bases in months. They ticked up on October 17th after the, the, uh, the war in Israel and Gaza started after the October 7th attacks. The reality is here, there has to be a link between the two. President Biden has repeatedly warned Iran, a longtime adversary of Israel, against getting involved in the war in the Middle East. Hezbollah emerged during Lebanon's 15-year civil war, which broke out in 1975, when simmering long-term discontent over the large armed Palestinian presence in the country reached a boiling point. Under a 1943 political agreement, Political power is divided amongst Lebanon's predominant religious groups. A Sunni Muslim serves as Prime Minister, a Maronite Christian as President and a Shiite Muslim as the Speaker of Parliament. Tensions between these groups evolved into civil war as several factors upset the delicate balance. The Sunni population had grown with the arrival of Palestinian refugees from Israel, while Shiites felt increasingly marginalised by the ruling Christian minority. Amid the infighting, Israeli forces invaded southern Lebanon in 1978 and again in 1982 to expel Palestinian guerrilla fighters that used the region as their base to attack Israel. A group of Shiites influenced by Iran, the region's major Shiite government, which came to power in 1979, took up arms against the Israeli occupation. Seeing an opportunity to expand its influence in Arab states, Iran and its Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps provided funds and training to the budding militia, which adopted the name Hezbollah, meaning the party of God. Hezbollah quickly earned a reputation for extremist militancy due to its frequent clashes with rival Shiite militia, such as the Amal movement and attacks on foreign targets, including the 1983 suicide bombings of barracks housing USA and French troops in Beirut, in which more than 300 people died. Hezbollah bills itself as a Shiite resistance movement, and it enshrined its ideology in a 1985 manifesto that vowed to expel Western powers from Lebanon, called for the destruction of the Israeli state, and pledged allegiance to Iran's supreme leader. Hezbollah has been a fixture of the Lebanese government since 1992, when eight of its members were elected to parliament, and the party has held cabinet positions since 2005. The most recent national elections in 2022 saw Hezbollah maintain its 13 seats in Lebanon's 128-member parliament, though the party and its allies lost their majority. Israel is Hezbollah's main enemy dating back to Israel's occupation of southern Lebanon in 1978. Hezbollah and Israel have yet to relapse into a full-blown war, but the group reiterated its commitment to the destruction of the Israeli state in its 2009 manifesto. In December 2018, Israel announced the discovery of miles of tunnels running from Lebanon into northern Israel that it claimed were created by Hezbollah. Hezbollah has attacked Israel with sophisticated anti-ship and anti-armor weapons, which Western officials say are supplied by Iran. And commentators have said that the precise weaponry being provided by Iran ensures that Hezbollah will become an increasingly dangerous threat to Israel. Following the October 7th assault on Israel by Hamas, the Iran-backed Palestinian militant group that governs the Gaza Strip, Hezbollah has fired shells across the Israel-Lebanon border in a show of what the group's leaders call solidarity with Hamas, and several Hezbollah militants reportedly attempted to infiltrate Israel. Hezbollah has signalled a willingness to further support Hamas in the war, which could pose a serious challenge for Israel and trigger further regional instability. US policymakers see Hezbollah as a global terrorist threat. The United States designated Hezbollah a foreign terrorist organisation in 1997, and several individual Hezbollah members are considered specially designated global terrorists, which subjects them to US sanctions. 
The Barack Obama administration provided aid to Lebanon's military with the hope of diminishing Hezbollah's credibility as the country's most capable military force. However, Hezbollah and the Lebanese military's parallel efforts to defend the Syrian border from the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda-affiliated militants made Congress hesitant to send further aid for fear that Hezbollah could acquire it. President Biden's administration has continued sanctioning individuals connected to Hezbollah's financing network, and in 2021 the Treasury Department announced sanctions targeting an international finance network accused of laundering tens of millions of dollars through regional finance systems to benefit Hezbollah and Iran. The European Union has taken a less aggressive approach to Hezbollah. The bloc designated Hezbollah's military arm a terrorist group in 2013 over its involvement in a bombing in Bulgaria and its backing of the Assad regime. In 2014, the EU's policy agency Europol and the United States created a joint group to counter Hezbollah's terrorist activities in Europe. In recent years, several European countries have taken a stronger stance and the UK Parliament deemed all of Hezbollah a terrorist group in 2019, followed by the German government in 2020. In response to Israel's current attacks on the Gaza Strip, the leader of Lebanon's Hezbollah has said his powerful militia is engaged in cross-border fighting with Israel and has threatened further realistic escalation. Speaking to a huge crowd in Beirut's Ashura Square, Nasr the General Secretary of the Lebanese Shia militant organisation, praised the Hamas attack in Israel in which more than 1,400 people were killed. He said the attack was purely the result of Palestinian planning and implementation, suggesting his militia had no part in it. الذي قد يفكر بالاعتداء على لبنان أو بقيامه بعملية استباقية باتجاه لبنان أنك سترتكب أقبل حماقة في تاريخك ووجودك أساطيلكم في البحر الأبيض المتوسط هذه لا تخيفنا ولم تخفنا في يوم من الأيام وأنا أقول لكم بكل صدق وصراحة إن أساطيلكم التي تهددون بها لقد أعددنا لها عدتها أيضا. حسان نازرلا stopped short of announcing that Hezbollah had fully joined the Israel-Hamas war, but warned that fighting on the Lebanon-Israel border would not be limited to the scale seen so far. Saying that Hezbollah had joined the battle on October the 8th, Nasrallah thanked groups in Yemen and Iraq, part of what's known as the Axis of Resistance, that includes Shia Muslim Iraqi militia who've been firing at US forces in Syria and Iraq and Yemen's Houthis who have fired drones at Israel. Nasrallah said operations have been increasing day by day even as Israel's Prime Minister warned Hezbollah against testing Israel or else they would pay dearly. Nasrallah made it clear that Hezbollah's intentions were to tie down Israeli troops that could otherwise be deployed in Gaza, warning that further escalation in the month was a realistic possibility. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video firstly to give you an up to the minute update on what's happening in the Middle East from the USA's perspective. And as we've seen in today's video, the USA forces that are based in the Middle East are coming under almost constant attack. There have been more than 40 attacks over the last month. So that's more than one per day. And these attacks are all being launched via drones and unmanned aircraft. And that obviously makes it very difficult to be able to fight back. It's impossible to be able to engage in direct warfare when it's guerrilla attacks from drones in the night that are targeting your bases. And as we saw in the report earlier, there are now multiple injuries on the US side of things. And the USA decided that enough was enough and they needed to take more retaliatory action. And so they've targeted bases in Syria. Now it's been reported in the media in the Middle East that nine people have been killed as part of these airstrikes. But I don't have any confirmation as to whether or not that's correct. But what we are seeing here is a rise in tension between these two sides. And the USA are pointing their fingers very firmly at Iran. They are saying that Iran are backing both the forces that are attacking US bases and also Hamas and also Hezbollah. Now the USA and Iran have a long history of tension and the USA has sanctioned Iranian oil and a variety of individuals. And there is a real possibility here that Iran could see this as an opportunity of fighting back against this US oppression. And I think the real risk of this tension exploding into something much larger and involving more parties would be if Hezbollah decides to get involved. Now as it stands at the moment, the leader of Hezbollah 
hasn't said that they're entering the war. There's a lot of saber-rattling. He's made a lot of threats and said that they will continue along the border defending their position and that they are ready if the USA takes any sort of preemptive action. But the USA are not going to do that. The USA's position here is to stand behind Israel. They are not getting involved in any active fighting. They're not going on the offensive. So the USA are not going to start anything. But if Hezbollah does get involved and does join the war against Israel, and this starts to explode into a much bigger conflict, there is a real risk that a Hezbollah missile could strike US forces because they're now based in the region. There are two huge aircraft carriers, which I'm sure Hezbollah would see as being prime targets if they wanted to launch a strike. And if that happened, then there would be a genuine possibility that the US would get involved. They'd have some boots on the ground and send some forces in. And this could then explode into a much bigger conflict. And of course, in the wings here is Russia. President Putin recently had a meeting with the leader of Iran and said that he wanted to develop ties further. And I'm sure if we saw Iran coming up against the USA, that Russia would be really interested in seeing what happened. So as I said earlier, I wanted to post this video to bring you up to speed as to what was happening. At the moment, we are talking about skirmishes between the USA and Iran. But as with any skirmish, it can quickly explode into something much bigger. So I'll keep you posted on any further news and developments as and when they happen. Hopefully you found today's video useful, informative and thought provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. And here's something to put a smile on your face.